Welcome back to Hoochos. Today on Hoochos, I'm gonna show you how to build this. This is the lazy man's self-watering garden. It is a wicking style system that can be used with the hydroponic method or with dirt that's been amended with wicking substrates. And it utilizes a float valve with a 3D print or as I'm gonna show you a bit later on in the video, without a 3D print, I'll also be releasing a new style of 3D print in this video. So this hydroponic system actually didn't come about from any purposeful direction. I didn't set out to build this design. I actually just noticed that some of my hydroponic citrus needed to be repotted because I was just overhead watering them and they had toppled over in the wind a couple of times so I wanted to repot them into a cocoa perlite mixture that was actually heavy in scoria. So the mix that these citrus are in is a one to one to one cocoa perlite scoria mix which makes the pots that they're in rather heavy heavy as you can see. I moved them into place and I wanted to use a float valve to deliver hydroponic nutrient and water to the plants but because the pots that I'm using are so big I didn't have a saucer that was capable of having the additional float valve in it. So I had some kids pools lying around and I was going to fill up the surrounds of the pot with pebbles originally, but I actually decided against doing that because when you look at the layout of the pool with the pot in it, it actually lends itself perfectly to the bag sizes that we've come across recently. And I wanted to utilize that method and the versatility of those bag systems so that we could customize the bags to the space around the large pot in the center. The corners of the pools are actually slightly raised, so I needed to come up with a way of introducing wicks into those bags. So I ended up cutting a notch into the end of a plastic rod, which was actually a mixing paddle, but it doesn't really matter what you use, and then threading the wick over the notch and pushing it into the bottom of the bag. This allows me to get a wick of any length. You can go the entire height of the pot if you want and push it in so that you can then drop the bag onto that ledge and have it wick up from the shallow float valve level that you've set the water to. In addition to these corner bags, I made up some smaller bags using the 350 millimeter wide poly tubing and sealing it with a new sealer that I have now, which is actually way easier to use than the vacuum sealer, a lot more efficient. You use it like a guillotine, it comes down, it seals for exactly the time you set it, and then the seal is done. It only cost me about, I think it was $35, and it's a 400 millimeter wide sealer. So it can handle the 500 millimeter wide plastic if you just seal it twice. And because it's such a fast process, there's no problem with doing this at all. So I sealed up the bags, I added in, it's just a 60-40 cocoa perlite mix and then I started to plant out the system. Some of the bags were already planted and some of the bags I added in. I'm using the corner bags as a perennial herb garden because this is going to be a more permanent system. I wanna utilize it for herbs and the edges I'm putting in Tioga strawberries, a few different types of strawberries actually. The bag size looks to be about the perfect media volume for strawberries. And with those edge bags, I just poke some holes in the bottom of the bags. And this is just going to allow them to wick up from the bottom of the bag naturally. The reason I bagged the media around the outside, and you could just add in cocoa perlite, is I wanted to be able to remove the bag and the media to replace it if I want to in the distant future. It also means that if it rains, we can siphon out that water. There are actually holes in the side of the pools, I had a similar idea um, using grow bags that ended up in a video that I never published. And I was utilizing these pools to hold those grow bags. There was a hole already drilled in the side of these pools so that if it rained, 
the pool didn't fill up completely, it would just overflow out of the hole. Okay, so it's now time to release the new 3D print that I've designed that will work with this system. And I'll also show you how you can do away with 3D printing altogether if you don't have a 3D printer. This design is the latest light version of the auto watering pot. So here you can see them in action. This is the latest design, and this is the one before that I designed to fit the contours of a saucer that is oversized for the pot that delivers the nutrient. Now, I actually prefer this design, but I wanted to save plastic and produce a light version of this design because it was up there at like 350, 400 grams of plastic, which is not cheap and it's just wasteful as far as I'm concerned. I redesigned it to be this. Now, this light version, it slides under the pot and holds itself at the same time as being very light on plastics. It was definitely an improvement on the original design, but I've actually found that it's because of the lack of rigidity in the design, and over time it starts to deteriorate. The way that I approached fixing this problem was to go back to my original idea of the contoured version and I wanted to block all of the nutrient around the contour as well. Instead of printing a whole piece like this upright, um, I just flipped it upside down and made the internals of it hollow. It required a little bit of mental gymnastics to get my head around how this would work, but it's also reduced in height. And why is it raining? This takes about oh, a quarter of the amount of filament. So this is the print that I'll be releasing today. It fits within standard sized growers pots and sources. So once you've printed it, just take it into your local hardware store and find the appropriate size pot and the appropriate size saucer, or alternatively, you can use it with the grow bag system. So you just purchase the saucer, add in a float valve, and you've got an auto watering pot for depending on how much your valve is worth, about 15 bucks, it's pretty good. I'm gonna have to go inside. <laughs> okay, so I actually don't think that uh, this is the perfect print for this system. I just used it because I had a few available. The ideal print would actually be, I hope you can hear me. Now this is actually good, I need this rain. Um, my tanks were getting low. We're going into the studio. <laughs> okay, so for this system, the ideal 3D print that I would recommend using is probably the float box because it will fit into the space and be held down by the larger pot and uses the least amount of filament. And that is what I'm gonna try and replace for you if you don't have a 3D printer. So my solution is, this. No, it's not a milk bottle. Uh, well, it is actually a milk bottle, but this milk bottle has been cut so that the handle flips back and the addition of a float valve has been added. This is the perfect float box. It allows you to adjust the float within our milk bottle. And all that you need to do is use a knife to cut this section of the handle away and the bottom. So we would slice the bottom open like so. This is gonna allow the water to escape from our milk bottle and fill the area that it's placed within. Now, if you wanted, you could actually slice this and put a window so that when you bend these back, the flaps come out the side and allow you to hold it down um, with the pot or whatever is in the area of the float box. And what this is going to achieve for us is it's just going to replace the place of... That will just slide down into our system like so, you would just use the pot to hold it into place. Or alternatively, you can put something on top of this, like a brick, something that's heavy enough to keep it down, but not gonna crush it, obviously. Something like this piece of wood. You would just have that in there, 
and that will hold down our float box. And this is going to enable you to build many hydroponic system designs that I've worked on previously. So what I'll do is at the end of this video, I'll leave a link to all of the systems that this opens up to you if you don't 3D print and you can watch those videos and see how those systems can benefit you in your hydroponic ecosystem. So the real beauty of this system is I didn't use a single tool to make it other than the hole in the side which is kind of optional and the bag sealing device if you're going to go with the bags this is all just an assembly job and i think that it's going to allow a lot of people to grow their own food at home all right well i hope you enjoyed this episode of who chose lots of exciting hydroponic systems opened up to a lot of people happy hydroponicking and i'll see you next time <laughs> on who chose